Hello YouTube, my name is Alex AK Foreign and I'd like to say a few things concerning GPUs and choosing between different brands. So it doesn't really matter if you're an NVIDIA or AMD user, what matters is what kind of aftermarket cooler manufacturer or board partner as they call them you should choose, and why I think it's the one with the lowest temperature first of all and noise levels second. First of all, I'll say we'll not be covering water cooling or liquid nitrogen cooling because I consider that outside of both my and most people's budget. If you want to hear about that kind of stuff, you're better off listening to Jay's Two Cents or Linus or other people who do GPU videos. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably read the title and thought it might be interesting to hear what this strange guy has to say on the topic, which would mean you may kinda be into computer tech and GPUs. I will assume you have some basic knowledge of PC gaming tech and have heard about at least some of NVIDIA's board partners. NVIDIA currently dominates the GPU market and I'll assume that 8 out of 10 people own an NVIDIA GPU of some sort, so let's talk about this first of all. The main board partners for NVIDIA are as follows, ASUS, EVGA, Gigabyte, MSI, PNY and Zotac, according to NVIDIA's official website. Many of these board partners have multiple iterations of all NVIDIA cards, which you should keep in mind, I will be able to cover everything, but what I will cover is some of the more popular ones. What I've done is opened up Amazon and just checked the most popular 970s. Now the 970 has been one of the most popular GPUs on the market for quite some time now, so let's have a look. Now the top 6 970s sorted by relevance in Amazon on the 8th of January 2016 are here in this table. I've added their boost in memory clocks, temps and noise so that we could truly compare them. I chose these 6 cards out of the first dozen of Amazon suggestions sorted by relevance because I could easily compare them. Using the techpower.com website, I searched for the most popular reviews for each card and used websites such as techpower.com, hardwareoverclock.com, guru3d.com and pcgameware.com, all of which I consider quite reputable. I have also rewatched some of Jay's Two Cents videos concerning certain models. Now we can do all kinds of things with this table and first of all let's sort it by price. Another thing that you should definitely keep in mind is that basically all Maxwell cards from Nvidia are very good overclockers. You can get around 1400 MHz if you know what you're doing, but then you won't care about your temperatures or noise levels because they'll most probably be pretty high anyway. I may talk about overclocking with Nvidia in a later video though, so let's stop here. Now if you look closely, the Zotac version of the 970s is the cheapest, but it is also the hottest, running on average at 76 degrees. If you seriously need an inaudible system when you're not gaming, then look into the ASUS and MSI cards. They both use the zero decibel tech, where the fans don't spin until the card's temps reach around 67 degrees, which is pretty high. So definitely take your needs and preferences into consideration when choosing a card. Interesting fact to note is that both EVGA cards run pretty hot, averaging at 74 degrees, but the benefit of the SSC ACX20 Plus Edition is that it's running at 3 decibels less in terms of noise level. It costs only 7 to 10 dollars more, so if you're considering an EVGA 970, then the SSC ACX20 Plus Edition is obviously the more superior choice, and its default boost clock is higher as well, if you're not into overclocking. The benefit of EVGA as far as I know is their high build quality and superior warranty service in the USA. Can't talk from experience though because I live pretty far away. Another interesting fact to note, even though Nvidia advertises most of its cards boost clocks at a certain speed, they usually boost around 7 to 10% more than advertised, so keep that in mind. The cards boost as much as the temps let them without letting the card overheat or consume more power than allowed. Manual overclocking gives much more impressive results though, with average speeds increasing core clocks over 15%. The coolest card of them all is definitely the Gigabyte card, but it's also the loudest and the most expensive. So if noise level is not an issue for you, then spending an average of $30 more may get you a far cooler card with much more temperature overhead for overclocking. An average of 60 degrees is pretty good for a GPU in general. Both the MSI and the ASUS Trix cards are quite average in both noise levels and temperatures, but have the benefit of the zero decibel tech they use, being absolutely inaudible when idling or light gaming. Which you should also keep in mind is that I overviewed the most relevant 970s on Amazon, which means that these cards were bought most often after searching Amazon for a 970. 
there may be much better and cheaper versions of the 970. And if you know some, then link me in the comment section below. So this is basically it, a quick overview of some of the more popular 970s that may in one way or another help you choose the right GPU. I myself would choose the Gigabyte card because the lower temperatures allow for much higher overclocking and thus getting more performance out of your video card. My name has been Alex AK4 and I thank you for your attention and hope to see you later.